Hey, uh, so my name's Wes. I'm on Team here at Oasis, and if um, you're somewhat new uh, to Oasis, on behalf of our pastors, Philip and Holly, we just want to say thank you so much for taking some time out uh, from your busy week to come to church. Uh, maybe you got convinced by a friend to be here, and, uh, or maybe you're watching online because you want to check it out for a minute first before you come uh, to a service, but just we want to say on behalf of our pastors, thanks for coming. And again, next week is going to be so powerful. And so hopefully uh, you'll be able to come back for that. So far this year, we've been talking on the topic of all in. Someone say all in. in. No, no, say it like you mean it. Say all in. in. Come on, look at that person next to you. Say, I'm all in. in. And we've been talking about all the different areas of being all in. Uh, You can all in in attending, inviting, giving, and serving. And, um, and we've been talking through each of these every single week and really going after the heart of what it means to be all in. Uh, being all in isn't just an outward thing. Being all in is an inward thing that expresses itself outwardly. Uh, when you're all in in here, it will express itself all in out here and more importantly, all in out there. And so uh, tonight, uh, we're continuing that discussion of all in and we're talking about all in in generosity, all in in generosity. Tonight, we're talking about how you get blessed. <laughs> People, okay, yeah, okay. I'll t- now, if, now, again, if you're new to Oasis and you're like, cried, and you like, you brought a friend, and there's like, man, tonight is the one night that they mentioned the word money, and you're like, oh my goodness, just relax, it's gonna be okay. Um, it, it's, it's gonna be okay. Uh, because what I wanna talk about tonight is our relationship with money. Our relationship with money. Have you ever seen someone change their, uh, their relationship status on Facebook? And that's like their announcement. Like, oh, in a relationship with so-and-so. I saw someone, uh, I saw someone's like this meme this week. And it was like uh, how you follow people in a relationship on Facebook and they're all like, they're kissing it and then they break up and they don't tell anyone why. It's like, I've invested so much of my life. I need an explanation. You can't just end the season right there of lost and I'm not sure what happened. You got to explain that. What if someone said, I'm in a relationship with money? All of us would be like, man, my man. Um, No one, you wouldn't think that way? Someone was in a relationship with money? I'm in a relationship with a billion dollars. They would be like, that's my friend. Friend request that person. (laughs) But I want you to turn to your Bibles, if you got a Bible, uh, to the book of Matthew. To the book of Matthew, chapter number 16. Matthew chapter number 16 And we're going to read one verse, and it's verse number 26. And Jesus says this. He says, and what do you benefit if you gain the whole world, but you lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your own soul? What do you benefit? What do you gain if you gain the whole world and you lose your own soul? Is anything worth? worth more than your soul. Let's pray. Let's ask God to talk to us tonight. Jesus, talk to us from your word tonight. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen. Amen. Um, Have you ever seen on like social media things, people who are like hashtag blessed? You ever seen that? Usually, and it's so silly. It's so silly when people put hashtag blessed. Usually it's when they're at an expensive spot. Like no one, no one takes a picture in a beat, like an old beat down restaurant like where like the like instead of an A on the door they have like a B or a C and then say hashtag bless day old sushi. No one does that. Uh, it's usually hashtag blessed when they're at some fancy hotel, you know, uh, they're at the Ritz Carlton, someone said they're at Cheesecake Factory, uh, hashtag blessed for the Adams fudge cup ripple uh, cheesecake. If you know what I'm talking about, you would say hashtag blessed. Um, but usually that's what it has to do is it, it, it in some way, it's always connected. When we say blessed, we think of some kind of financial number with it. And when we say hashtag blessed on things uh, that are kind of beat up or someone's beat up car, and we say hashtag blessed, they know what we mean. They know that we're making fun of their old Corolla. Now, I love old Corollas, but if you post a picture of it and it's got seven different colors in like one hubcap and one non-hubcap, and someone puts hashtag blessed, like you asked for it, okay? You put the picture online, and someone responded with hashtag blessed. Um, but our relationship with money is very interesting because few things will get people more intense than when you talk about 
It used to just be money and sex, but now politics has found its way to the number one spot. Um, it, politics was like the number three, and then it was like, oh, watch, watch what I can do. And politics became the number one most awkward thing. Uh, but the thing is, is money and sex right below that, and those are two things that people don't really talk about. Like when, I mean, when is the last time you talked with your parents about money? Or when is the last time you ever talked with your parents or your parents, if they ever have, talked to you about sex? I remember on my wedding day, I was 26, you guys, and my dad was like, hey, so, <laughs> could you not? Hey, ha-ha. <laughs> 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 it's today, it's today. I was like, Dad, I went to public school. <laughs> Honest to God, I was like, Dad, I went to public school. It's, I'm good. He's like, oh, thank God, thank God. Let's pray, let's pray. That's what he wanted. <laughs> but it's funny, it's, it's one of those topics of, of those things that, that matter so much to us in our world and have such, such uh, the way Pastor Philip said it earlier today, it's like in some way, there's like this invisible string between our wallet and our heart. And it's like, how do we talk about these things that matter so much, but are, are so, they're like, they're like a stick of dynamite. They can explode and go all the wrong directions. How do you talk about these things? And Jesus himself, he did not shy away from the topic of money. He didn't shy away from talking about money. In fact, he used money to describe the things of the kingdom. He used money to describe, he says, okay, uh, the kingdom of God is like this. And it's like, uh, it's like coins. It's like a paycheck. It's like, oh, okay, I understand that. The kingdom of God is like, it's like someone finds this field and it's worth a lot of money and the zoning is right and you can build a house on it and you go and you buy it. Like he uses, he uses financial instruments to explain the kingdom. Jesus doesn't shy away from talking about money. So then how do you and I define our relationship with money? Have you ever had one of those defining the relationship conversations with someone? You know what I'm talking about? It's like, it's like you've been friends, and then now you're like more than friends, but, you're, but you haven't changed the status somewhere. Like people ask you, hey, so are you guys like, and like, no, nah, you know. When people start asking the question, you have to define that relationship. Okay, gentlemen, you can't just take her out on eight coffees and just call yourself still friends. You better have that difficult conversation of like, okay, this is where I see where we are at. Do you agree? Anyway, so you have to have this same conversation with money. Of money, this is where I see that we're at. Do you agree? Are we on the same level? You have to define that relationship. And so what do you do with money? What do you do? What is your response with money. The first question is this, is do you run from money? Do you run from money? And let me explain, because uh, some people would be like, uh, no. Um, but do you run from money? And there's a scripture in Acts 3, 6, where, uh, where Peter and John, they're walking into the temple, and, and they're, they're going to church on a regular, just a Tuesday or a Wednesday, and they go to the church, and this guy's like, hey, can I get a dollar? And they're like, oh, man, I left my wall in the car, uh, so silver and gold, I don't have, but what I do have, I give to you. And they lift this guy up, and he gets healed. And so what people did for a lot of years is the saints in this desire to have this type of relationship with God and in a desire to, to, to pull people up out of wheelchairs. I mean, I don't know if you've ever done it. I certainly have tried it, pulling people up out of wheelchairs and praying for them and seeing the miracles of God. They thought that they always had to have silver and gold, have I none? They thought that what those two leaders there in that passage experienced on a Tuesday had to be an everyday situation. And even some would misquote in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse number 10, they misquote it and they say, money is the root of all evil. How many of you ever heard someone say that? Money, oh, it's the root of all kinds of evil. You know the Bible doesn't say that. You know the Bible, it says the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And so what happened is we have all of these saints and these people with this burning desire to do something great for God. 
They want to do something great for God, and they feel that money is, is, an, is, an, enemy, is an enemy and will slow them down in that journey towards God. And so when anything financial comes up, they run from money. Oh, no, I can't take that job. It pays too much. Or, you know, it may, it, that, that money, it just when that money, when that uh, bank account starts getting too high, I get too nervous because, because I'm going to be afraid that my heart's going to be drawn away to that. Or, or I'm afraid if someone tries to bless me. Have you ever done this? You ever try to bless someone with some money and they said no? Or how about this? Have you ever been that person where someone tried to bless you and you're like, no, and, you, and, and it's awkward because you want to say yes, but you also, you're, you're afraid that that money may in some way start to control you. And so we had all these saints saying no and running from money because they thought that that was the way to fulfill the will of God in their life. The crazy thing is, is that, do you know that some people can have no money and think about money more than people with money? Just because you don't have money doesn't mean that you don't think about money. Just because you don't have money doesn't mean that you are not consumed constantly by the thought of how can I get more money. And so a zeroed out bank account or a negative bank account is not the goal then. It's not running from money. So then what do we do? Do we go to the other extreme and now do we run to money? Ask yourself that question. Do we run to money? If we don't run from money, do we run to money? And Jesus says this, back to that scripture at the beginning in Matthew number 16. He says this, and how do you benefit or what benefit is it? What gain is it? Come on, someone say gains. Pretend like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretend like you follow that person on Instagram too. Everyone say gains. <laughs> what benefit or how useful is it for you to gain, for you to, to win, to profit, to trade up? You know that that's a financial term there, that, that word there? That it means to trade up. It's a mercantile term. It means to trade up. It means to amass. What, what value is it? If you trade up, if you, have, if you post all these big gains, and then it says, and you lose your own soul. And that word lose is not just losing, it's like suffering loss. It's not just losing money, it's like losing money in a car accident, and now you're injured as well. What benefit is it if we gain everything and we lose that vital part of who we are? Have you ever heard someone say, man, you've changed? Isn't it so funny, that phrase right there? You can say it two different ways, and one's super positive, and one is like super negative. One is like, you know, if you see someone, they've lost some weight, you're like, wow, you've changed. <laughs> wow. And then you see someone ordering some foo-foo drink, or a friend of mine earlier this week said he, he, he traded up in his ice cream place. He said he didn't go to Baskin Robbins. He goes to... Salt and straw. And so I was laughing at him. I was like, man, you've changed. <laughs> so you've got, wow, you've changed. And wow, you've changed, man. You've changed. <laughs> it's always with the point. And the point comes out and it just stabs you right in the heart. It just stabs and then it goes back. Wow, you've changed. And you can't blink while you say it. You can't say like, well, you've changed. It's like, it's, you've changed. No blank, because that's how serious it is. So what profit is it if you gain the whole world and you lose your soul? So do, we don't run from money. And then the question is, fine, then do I run to money? Because we're talking about how do I define my relationship with money? Do I run to money? And Paul also talks about this, and he says this. Paul, when he's talking in 1 Timothy chapter number 6, because we're talking about our relationship with money, and he says this, 1 Timothy chapter number 6, verse number 9, he says, but people who long to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many foolish and harmful desires that plunge them into ruin and destructions. 
When gain becomes the goal, we are guaranteed to suffer loss. When it's not just running from money, but now you're running to money, when that gain becomes the goal, you are guaranteed to suffer loss. So you're guaranteed to suffer grief. Because you see people, they, they start amassing bank accounts or they start amassing items and then those items cause problems. Do you know, have you ever heard that one theologian who said more money, more problems? Or how about this, this, this may be reaching back a little bit, messing with my money is like messing with my emotion. I don't know, about three of you guys got that. I'm 36 now. So, but that we gain so much and that's so much that we gain now has to be taken care of. You've got money, now you've got to pay for a lawyer to protect it. And then you've got to hire a CPA to protect on that side. And then you've got to hire uh, armed security to kind of guard that money as it goes different places. And then now you can't drive around in the Corolla, hashtag blessed. You've got, to roll, you've got to move up to the Camry. And then you've got to move from the Camry up to the Lexus because you've got to keep it in the family. And so you're moving up and you're moving up and you're moving up. And now your insurance went up, and now you're not getting the same gas mileage because the Corolla is not the same gas mileage as the Camry, and the Camry doesn't have the same gas mileage as the RX, whatever it is, and the Lexus all leathered out. They're like, now your gas mileage went down, and your insurance went up, and money's going out, and then you got to pay this guy to guard the money, and you got to pay the CPA to do the filings, and then you got to pay the attorney to make sure that you don't get sued while you're rolling around town in the Lexus, and now you got more money, more problems. And now money has just consumed you just as much as the person who is running from money who's only thinking about money. I've seen people who are running from money, but they desire to do the will of God, and they wanted to do something so great. They wanted to do something so great. And so a need would come up, or a missions thing would come up, or, or they would see a need in the church, and they say, I want to give to that, but they wouldn't have means to it. So I, I kid you not, I have seen people do this, write a check that they knew would not cash. But their heart was so in it, man. Their heart was so in it, and they were just praying by some miracle that some... Something would happen between the time that that check got processed and some kind of miracle in their banking account. But it was because they're running from money. So do I run from money? Do I run to money? And the people who run to money, they end up amassing all of these great things, but they lose the things that are most important. They lose the things that they thought that that money could provide for them. They have money, but they don't have love. They have a larger 401k, but they don't have family to share it with. They've got the nicest car, but no friends that they can trust. They've got the contract, but they've got no one to celebrate it with. They've got the greatest bank account, but no one to drive them to the hospital when they're sick. I don't know if you've ever heard that phrase that says that a person will spend all of their health to get wealth and then will gladly trade all of their wealth to gain back their health. And we live in a city where people are constantly trying to run to money. And on the outside looking in, it looks like things are going really, really well. And Jesus says, hey, why would you gain everything and trade up everything only to lose your soul, that vital part of who you really are? And now you're the one looking at yourself in the mirror saying, wow, you've changed. So what do we do with money? Like, what do we do with it? It's super awkward. Do I run from it? Do I run to it? Or what I would propose to you tonight is that we run with it. That we run with it. See, money is not an enemy. Money is a tool. Just like a brick can be thrown through a window with hate, or it can build a beautiful cathedral, a brick is just a tool. 
And it can be done harm or it can be done good. It all depends on whose hand it's in. So when money is in your hand, what does it do? Does it harm or does it help? Does it bring people down or does it build people up? Does it build your house or does it build God's house? What does money do in your hand? Do you know that money shows where your heart really is? You can look at where you spend your money and you know where your heart is. Gentlemen, uh, this Wednesday, just in case you know, if you were in a relationship, it's Valentine's Day. I don't care if you celebrate it or not. I don't care if you think it's a made-up holiday because it is. Hallmark's trying to get you to spend $7 on a card now on a piece of paper. A piece of paper with a crease in it, and they think because the squirrel is dancing or because the heart's singing a song, it's $7.99 now. But guess what's going to happen? Me and our two kids are going to go to the local grocery store, and I'm going to say, hey, guys, pick out a card, and I'm going to show them the 99-cent ones. It's right down here on the bottom. And my son inevitably will reach up and he will find the one with the dancing squirrel. I don't know why. I don't know why it's always a dancing squirrel or some kind of dancing animal. And he goes, and it's some song. It's always like, it's like Pharrell's Happy or something. It, it's, it's some kind of song and they're dancing. And then the people at the store is like, yeah, that's worth eight bucks. Piece of paper, fold in half. It's got a squirrel on it, man. But where you put your money, that's where your heart is at. And so check this out, check this out, check this out. Money's not the enemy, money's a tool. And money is not the journey. Money is meant to fuel the journey. So money is not the enemy, it's a tool. And money is not a journey. That's not, that's not the point, it's fuel for the journey. It's kind of like, that would be like someone saying, I got a full gas tank, but I'm going nowhere. A full gas tank means that you can actually go somewhere. And this is where I want to land here tonight, is on the journey. Because what you have is not about what you have, it's what God can do through you in this city. It's not just about how big is my bank account? How great are the shoes or, or, or the clothes? All those things are great. And by the way, Paul even says in that, in that, in that 1 Timothy chapter 6 chapter, he's like, hey, command those who are rich in this world, hey, just be humble. Enjoy what God's given you. There's nothing wrong with you enjoying what God's given you. There's nothing wrong with, with that, but just be humble. Don't trust in that. Don't put your trust in what a savings account says or a checking account or a, or a retirement account or an investment account. Put your trust in God because you're on a journey. Because you're going somewhere. And because this church is going somewhere. He says this, teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud and not to trust in their money, which is so unreliable. The market's up, the market's down. Your boss wants you to give you a raise and then they take it back. They say, hey, we want you to be full-time, and then they cut back your hours to part-time. They say that the contract is good, and then they rescind the contract. He said, which is so unreliable, their trust should be in God, who richly gives us all the things that we need for enjoyment. Do you know that God wants to bless you sometimes just so that you can enjoy it, just because he's a good God? But the next verse says this. Tell them to use their money to do good. They should be rich in good works and generous to those in need. Always being ready to share with others. I hope that you become so wealthy. I hope to God that you become so wealthy. I hope that you become so wealthy in good works. I hope that you become rich. I really do. I hope that you become so filthy rich in relationships that matter and that count. I hope that you have treasure. I really do. I hope that you have so much treasure that it literally boggles people. I hope that you have treasure in heaven. 
Paul finishes out that verse and he says, hey, teach them not to, not to trust and to do this. And he says, but just remember to lay up treasure in heaven. He says this, by doing so, they will be storing up for themselves a treasure and a good foundation for future so that they may experience true life. There is a journey that God has for you to go on and a journey that God has this church to go on. And so what God gives you, that is for that journey. That's for that journey. A lot of times when I, because I, I have the honor of working with a lot of our amazing business people in this church, and sometimes they get big contracts and big deals, and always the first question is, okay, why? Why did God give that to you? Was it for enjoyment? Was it for tomorrow? Or was it for a journey? The journey of this church, the journey of this house, the journey of this city that God has us on. So how do we define our relationship with money? Will you run from it? Will you run to it? Or will you use it like fuel and just run with it? And knowing that the things that God puts in your hand are not just to look sparkly in your hand, but there's a reason. There's a reason. And so I'm gonna pray for a couple of different things. We have just a couple extra minutes here. But I'm gonna pray for a couple extra things. I'm gonna pray for two different groups of people, and I'm gonna pray for you together. And one is, you, I know this sounds so silly to some people, like you can't even fathom it, but I've, I've seen it and I felt it myself. You've been running from money. God tries to bring blessings your way and you say no. God brings stuff your way and you feel like you have to give it all away, although that's amazing. But you've been running from money. Or the second is you've been running to money. You've been running to money. It's been that driving force behind all the decisions of your life. Now, I'm going to pray for that group, and then I'm going to pray for one of the group is that you're in financial need. And sometimes when you're in financial need, that thing's right in front of your face. And I totally understand that. But just with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you're in that first group and you're saying, hey, Wes, I've been either running from money or I've been running to money. I've been running from money or I've been running to money. I just want you to lift your hand up in the air. That's a sign saying, God, I'm sorry. I will not run from your blessings and I will not make finances my primary pursuit. Just stick your hand up in the air. Say, God, I'm sorry. God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for concerning myself only about money and only pursuing money. I'm sorry for running from the blessing of God. Jesus, you see every hand and you see every heart. We want to respond to you, Jesus. Forgive us for where we've run. We want to run to you, Jesus, and with the things that you have given us. If you're in financial need here tonight, I want to pray for you. Stand up on your feet. If you're in, if you find yourself in a major financial need tonight, I want you just to stand up on your feet right now, and I'm going to pray for you. And just while people are standing, I'm going to tell you a couple of stories. I remember the first youth camp I ever went to was $99, and I didn't have the $99 to go to it. And someone said, hey, Wes, we love you. We believe in you. We want to pay for you to go. And you know that God changed my life. God changed my life at that camp. And God brought it to my heart this week of just like, hey, do you remember that? Someone made a way. Someone used what they had in their journey and they helped to fund the journey I was on. If you're in financial need, quickly jump to your, jump to your feet. This isn't that you've done anything wrong. Sometimes it's just that we actually live in one of the most expensive cities in the world. I don't know if you know that. And somehow 
owners of apartment buildings find a way to scam us out of lots of money, especially in February. It's like four weeks, and they got the same amount that they got in January. But if you're in financial need today, I want you to jump to your feet right now. And if you're standing, I want you just to put your hands out right in front of you. And if you love Jesus, especially if you're a leader and someone's standing near you, I want you just to come put a hand on their shoulder. You don't have to give them a word or you don't have to shout in their ear, but just come alongside them and support them because we're gonna believe God for miracles. We're gonna believe God for financial miracles. Come on, leaders, if there's someone around you, you may have to move from where you're at. Jesus, right now, we pray for miracles. Miracles along the journey. Miracles along the journey. God, I thank you, God, that the people in this room, God, that you have called them to be here. You've called them to be a part of this city. And so, God, we pray for miracles tonight. God, I'm praying, God, for financial miracles on their behalf. God, for some people, God, they're looking for a job or a better job. God, they're, they're you know, even as we're talking about a Corolla, they're like, God, I want that car. God, I want that car. God, I'm tired of riding the bus. Or God, I'm tired of, you know, having to pay Uber. Or I'm tired of this. God, I'm praying, God, that you would provide for them, God. God, I'm praying, God, for miracles, God, from heaven on their journey. God, I'm praying, God, for especially for those, God, with young kids. God, I'm praying, God, for miracles on their behalf. God, oh God, I pray, God, for any of them that have children in their home. I don't know if you've got, if you've got children in your home, lift your hand towards heaven. God, I pray, God, for a miracle on their behalf. God, I come alongside these friends. And God, we thank you, God, that you are giving them all that they need for life and godliness. God, we thank you, God, for the miracles from heaven. God, we thank you, God, for the miracles from heaven. Jesus, you have our heart. Jesus, we belong to you. And so, God, I'm praying, God, for the miracle to do what you have called them to do in this city. In Jesus' name, God, there's a journey that they're on. God, there's a miraculous journey that they're on. And so, God, I'm praying for a call back this week. God, I pray for a contract this week. I pray for a deal this week. I pray for more hours this week. I pray, God, that not only the people who are praying for more hours, God, they're going to get a better job this week. In Jesus' name, miracles for the journey that you have them on. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Miracles. Miracles on the journey. Miracles. Miracles. Miracles, Lord. Miracles to run the race and the journey that you have for them to run. Can we do this together? Can we all stand up on our feet together? And we're gonna go just into just a brief moment of worship and we have some baptisms and some really cool things happening tonight. But there's a journey that God has you on and there's a journey that God has this church on. And if we can collectively say, God, we just wanna be about your business. God, we just wanna be about your business. We wanna be about making your name great in this city. We wanna be about making your name famous. Not us famous, but making Jesus famous and making his name great. Can we do this if you're physically able to? Can we just lift our hands towards heaven? And let's just join Amy and the team as we worship here.